My work history. During school, I was bullied by the teachers immensely. I don't believe that I was the kind of kid who was a nasty little bastard. I don't believe I was that kind of person. But I was the short, fat, ginger kid who who didn't have much of an education due to the teachers, you know, the not making eye contact, not having, not being involved, being stabbed with pencils, getting beaten from the teachers. But regardless of that, I still went to school. Just being with the children was uh, fun enough. Anyway, uh, in high school, um, I was pretty much just left to do my own thing as long as I turned up at school. Um, and that was okay, I think, for the teachers. But I, I did leave school with one or two diplomas. Uh, well, more than one or two, but I did leave w with the diplomas. So, at the age of um, 16, I was already working in a petrol station, serving petrol and filling the shelves in the shop. At the age of 17, I worked three months in a quilt factory. Now, that was for my auntie and my uncle. Um, that was okay, but it was small wages for a lot of work, but my dad gave me the opportunity of being a joiner. So I went on to be a joiner. I went to college for two years to learn how to work with, with timber, um, which was a fantastic time. I, but seeing as it's a uh, work history, I, I worked in London and Kent pr primarily shop fitting, which is, which is actually fantastic. I mean, the shop fitting itself is, is a good good job on its own. But, you know, you're staying in different hotels, different guest houses every two weeks. It takes about two weeks to, to do one shop. Um, my dad had uh, three teams of, of men working on the shops. So I was always with one of those teams. <coughs> um, so we worked two weeks and then home for one weekend for washing your clothes and seeing your family. Uh, so after I finished that I had a huge car crash and so that was seven years doing that. Then I, uh, in between I'm also helping mum, you know, but if I wanted, uh, because I was the boss's son, um, if I wanted to have a couple of weeks off I could stay at home, I could help mum, uh, go and see my friends, which also gives my mum a break from just sitting and waiting in the house phone calls. Um, so the, the guest house eventually became a children's private day nursery, taking children from three months old up to the ages of five, plus a, an after school club up to eight years old. Uh, now this was the most fantastic job I could ever suggest anybody to ever do. But it is a young person's game, I do believe. Because, you know, you have to be crouching on the floor, you have to be quick, you have to react quick. Because uh, it's not just about teaching, it's not just about, you know, uh, explaining things to children. You've got to be able to get in with them, you've got to be able to get on the floor and play and, um, and tidy up. Um, but it's a wonderful, that was a wonderful experience to be able to work with children. Um, so I did that for seven years. So after that seven years, my uh, father decided to retire, so he retired, and my mother also decided to retire, so they both sold their businesses, um, but with selling uh, my mother's business, the private day nursery, that also sold our home. So uh, by this time I'd already moved out, I already had my own home um, with the lady I was living with at the time. Um, so then I needed a job because I didn't want to work for the people who had bought the, the children's nursery. So I was lucky enough to be able to get a job working for a school, um, the special needs school. Now the special needs school, I hadn't, uh, I, when I was 15 years old I did work experience with my school who sent me to the, this special needs school. So I, I, I'd have only a little bit of experience working with people with special needs. So I uh, eventually, I worked there for one year and uh, again that was a wonderful time but 
it was quite difficult with some of the ladies that we worked with. Um, it's surprising, I think, maybe how much of bastards some people can be. So, sorry, how much ladies can be like that. Um, but at the time, I, I think maybe the problem was maybe a little bit of jealousy, or maybe the man thing, or maybe um, you know people had to leave because their job had finished, and I had a different kind of job, and uh, that job, my job, could have been given to one of their friends. So I, so I think. Maybe a, a mixture of a few different things. Well, I was there for one year. I enjoyed it, but I was happy to leave. When I left, I went to work for the probation service on the community service side of things. I was able to put my skills, firstly, to um, some people on community service have children and they can't serve their community service time because they've got children. So they were able to bring their children to the community service centre. I would look after the children while they would serve out their sentence. So I did this for maybe one year or so. Um, and I was threatened by uh, a man because um, not only did I look after the children, I also had to take men out to do jobs, to do painting, to do gardening, to work on um, the graveyards, to work on the fences of graveyards. Um, and there was a guy who, who disliked me immensely and he was a known felon, a real nasty guy and he, he decided that he wanted to pick on me and uh, I left. I left quickly actually. So when I left the probation service, the community service, um, I went self-employed for a short while, only for a few months and I canvassed the uh, the richer areas, I canvassed those areas um, and very quickly started earning good money. But one day my dad telephoned me and he said that he was going on, ho on a working holiday. Okay, he was a pensioner but he called it a working holiday um, to a place called Bulgaria <coughs> to look at property. And uh, so I mentioned to him that maybe I could come along. So. I went along. I didn't even know how to spell Bulgaria, to be honest, when I first came. Um, so we came to Bulgaria. My father purchased a a run a rundown bar, um, and after he purchased it, I came over to renovate the bar. So for three months, that's what I was doing here, and in the meantime, I'd met the love of my life, uh, Mrs. Palmolive Soap, and uh, my visa ran out after the three months, but I stayed an extra five months on top, and uh, by this time I'd already realised that marriage with this woman would be perfect, so we got married. Um, as soon as we got married, I started trying to work as real, real estate, selling properties to people, uh, renovating properties for people who had already bought. Uh, that was going quite well, but um, the world and his wife came to Bulgaria just not long afterwards. And uh, you had people who were postmen saying that they were builders. You had people who drove uh, taxis that they were builders. You had people who, <laughs> you know, people who had never even, uh, maybe they owned a DIY screwdriver saying that they were builders. So that business uh, came to nothing. So then I eventually started having to work like the locals. I had to work in the shops, um, the restaurants and bars. Um, and uh, this year I went back to the UK to work in uh, Woolworths Warehouse and Index, no, Argos Direct. As working as a temp. So that's my work history. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace out. This is Palm Olive Soap.